don't panic. Those are pretty good words to start off your game with, I gotta say. So this is Dead Cells, an early access 2D side-scrolling action roguelite platformer thing. And it looks pretty damn cool which is why I decided to snap it up immediately. I haven't actually tried it out yet just aside from a little bit to make sure I could record it smoothly, and I can. So let's just get right into things. Oh boy, I'm a ball of sentient sludge. My dream come true. A ball of sentient sludge with a sword. Ooh, that is a very satisfying duet of attacks. They also make you slide forward, which is a little bit weird. Got a double jump. And a friend. A friend that it is not a sludge boy. Not sure how I feel about that. Hmm, pretty good music so far, I must say. I can no longer die. Sounds pretty good to me. I'll take being a sludge person, if that's what is required for me to be immortal. Alright, we got a bow. Beginner's bow. Secondary weapon only. Alright, and I have limited ammo which seems to be shown in that counter on the bow itself, those little green pips. Ooh, I can just straight up destroy doors with it. That's a powerful bow. And I also have the good old wooden shield. Ah, so only one item in each slot. So, bow or shield is the question. Interesting that I can't just hold up a block like you can in most games with a shield. Here, you press it and it puts up the guard for a limited amount of time, so you actually have to time your blocks. That actually makes me fairly interested in trying out the shield, so I'll go with that over the bow. And hopefully things will work out. Whoa! Good thing I grabbed that ledge. There seems to be trouble down there. Trouble I think I'd best avoid, given the fact that there doesn't actually seem to be anything of worth down there. It's a roguelite after all, so pick your battles. Like this guy is pretty easy to take down. Alright, there's a little bit of puzzle solving of sorts, at least of the basic switch door variety. And you can pan the camera with the right analog stick, if you haven't noticed. Very useful feature, more 2D side-scrolling games need to allow you to do that. Teleporter, oh! So this might be like, uh... What is that game? I haven't played too much of it so I have a hard time recalling its name. The one with all the guns and the cuteness and the bored enemies. Uh... Legend of the Gungeon? Enter the Gungeon, that's it. That game has a system where you unlock teleports at various intervals in your run and you can just teleport back to them f from anywhere. And it makes backtracking way easier than it is in most other roguelites. That seems like it's going to be the case here as well. Okay, so I get a little bit of a reward for making it this far. Hey, now that seems like a pretty good shield upgrade. Sturdy Shield 2. It also gives me a damage bonus, and it makes it so that enemies hit explode on death. Yeah, let's swap that. Oh, wait, no! That is interesting. Huh. So I can actually put a shield on my primary if I so desired. Uh, I don't really want to do that though. That's why it brought up this screen here. So presumably I can strike things with the shield in some way. Maybe if I just guard at the right time, guard with perfect timing, it'll counterattack and that'll cause that explosion effect. Either that or it's just referring to sword kills. But that seems a bit odd. Alright, these guys lob grenades. I really wish I had a bow here, but I'm just gonna have to do without. 
These guys aren't too tough. Oh yeah, I also have a vol button. Which is coming in pretty handy. Enemies seem to be able to be stun-locked pretty easily. Alright, gold locked doors. I have nowhere near enough to make that, unfortunately. Treasure down there. What looks like might be a map. Or a magic scroll, perhaps. Oh wow, enemies aggro from further away than I realized. That's going to be annoying to deal with. I'm just going to wait for both of these guys to go over here so I can drop down and maul them to death. Can I just drop from the chain? Ah, uh, kind of. Alright, didn't manage to attack them at the same time, but it worked out nonetheless. Choose one of your three stats to improve. Oh, okay. Level up. Not through experience, but through collectibles. So do I want health, strength, or skills? Increase active skill damage and reduce their cooldown timer. Well, I don't have any skills just yet. I'm assuming that's what's going to be assigned to the shoulder buttons. Um, let's go with more damage for now. Best defense is a good offense after all. Yeah, this is what I was trying with that previous encounter. I gotta say, I like the combat so far. It's very fast and fluid and oh! Those guys can toss up grenades up here. That's unfair. Why am I confined to a 2D plane but you're not? Maybe if I pick up grenades I'll be able to do that too though. Oh dear. That's actually pretty threatening and actually pretty novel. I've not come across too many games that actually do that. Have a, uh, what is a 2D game, actually have three dimensionality to some degree. So these are just free so no reason not to take them. Skill power and cooldown improved. Okay, so this one was just a set. Uh, a set bonus. I didn't get to choose. And... Are you a friendly? I think you might be a merchant. Oh, did, that is a nice dynamic music change. I mean, nothing new for a roguelike game. In fact, uh, if you want a roguelite game that does a really good job of that, it is Crypt of the Necrodancer, as it should since that game is a rhythm roguelike. Heavily music based. But yeah, I like that transition from the, uh, the tense dungeon crawling music to the more peaceful merchant interaction music. Everything is for sale. What can I do for you? Are you gonna buy something or are you just hanging around? You know, this is going to get old. And he stops to <laughs> buy something or get out of here. I like that. Okay, and then he loops. Let's see, everything is way too pricey for me. But maybe I'll want to return here so I can indeed pick up grenades. Hopefully I can lob them across barriers, walls, floors like the enemies are. Frost Blast, a spell. Flashbang. And a Moonstone Amulet. Jump attacks burn enemies. Oh, do I have specific jumping attacks? Uh, not really. It's not really any different. It just makes it so that only my jumping attacks have that special effect as to all of them. Probably a limiter to prevent that from being too overpowered. So there's some pretty interesting gear in this it seems. Oh dear. Hey, that worked out though. Yeah, again, your character's movement is really fluid and you can really hum through the environments. Once I get better and, you know, if I'm not giving commentary, I could see myself like just flying through these stages really quickly and in a very satisfying fashion. Ooh, blueprint for Bloodsword. I wonder if that's a persistent thing. I won't be able to craft that for new runs. Oh, that was a nasty attack. Okay, so if I get hit by the grenade, it doesn't automatically explode. It only explodes after a set time. I'll have to keep that in mind when dodging it. But yeah, these basic green zombie enemies are actually fairly dangerous if you uh, let them get off an attack. I've not come across any form of healing so far, so I guess it's going to be one of those roguelites where healing is pretty damn rare. Ooh, how to approach this. Then dodge this way before he goes ham on me. Take down him. Uh, oh, that's food. I'll deal with that once I have a bit of calmness going on. Hopefully it won't disappear. 
Alright, I'm fine. There's two more enemies over there, but I don't think they'll notice me or have the ability to do anything about me if they do. Okay, so food you can just pick up and eat immediately. Good to know. Oh, dick. Let's see. I, I really should try blocking since I do have a shield after all. I really haven't been doing too much with that. Mainly because my basic attack combo is pretty baller. Really don't need to rely on the solid standing defense when I have my on the fly kill the enemy before they can do anything to be defense. The Promenade of the Condemned. Is that like a little bonus area perhaps? Or... It says leave, that makes it sound like it might be an exit so I'd like to do a little bit more progress. So let's teleport to one of my previous teleporters. And explore a little bit more, yeah. Seriously, unless you unless your roguelite is designed specifically such that teleporters would fuck with the flow, all roguelites should have teleporters like this. They are so convenient. Also, uh, look at these lighting effects with the torches. That's really nice looking. This game is uh has some really excellent pixel art. We'll see if it actually has environmental variety though, for all I know this might be the only tile set. In which case it's a little bit underwhelming. Aw, uh, it's a little... Goomin. And I can tickle him, aw. Come here little buddy. Aw. I mean, presumably that's like the soul of someone else. Given uh, what that one warrior's dialogue was about. Or maybe he doesn't realize that I'm a Goomin. Hmm, can't really do much else, and I don't feel like striking it. That would be rather rude. Ooh, that looks like a secret of some sort. How do I get to you, my double-edged scissor friend? Looks kind of like scissors. Maybe crossed blades. Maybe stag horns. Hmm. Oh, there are enemies here. I can't deal with you just yet. <gasps> okay, for a second I was worried that they might be harmed. Just gonna deal with you. Throwing knives causes bleeding 29 damage a second for 2 seconds. Damn. And I get 8 of them and they do 20 damage. That's really nice. The attack automatically targets the closest enemy. Nice. So I don't even have to necessarily face to aim it. Okay, but I'm gonna have to get rid of something. Since it's limited, let's get rid of the shield. I'll try out blocking mechanics later, I think. So yeah, how do I get to that secret there? Is there an invisible wall right here? Uh, not quite. Maybe that's something I'll need like a special ability to reach. I really want it though, it looks cool. Looks like it would be good. It'd be awesome if there were multiple weapon types and that's one. Hmm, I'm gonna deal with Grenade boy first. Oh, okay, this is not going like how I planned. And also, you can't roll multiple times in a row. There's a little bit of a lag time, which I'm getting used to. Why am I doing things so... Wow, okay. There goes my skills, right? Okay. Took down one grenade boy at the cost of a lot of my health. I really could have handled that better. Maybe I should have focused on shield boy first. Well, uh, it worked out in the end, I suppose. I don't, I don't think any of the, uh, yeah, the, the one merchant I've come across in that one gold door, neither of them had a health item, which I could really be using. Maybe I'll come across someone selling that soon enough. That'd be nice. Oh, use the rune, this one on the floor. Uh, I don't know what that's about. Oh, hey, it's a, a bear trap. Is that going to replace one of my active weapons? No. Alright, so immobilize the target for 5 seconds and boost the damage you do by 35%. Is uh, that limited to any degree? Is it ammunition based? No, but it does have a recharge time, okay. Um, well I might as well interact with this rune. Hopefully it doesn't like, I don't know, put me in the middle of an enemy gauntlet. Oh, it makes a secret area appear. 
Okay, call me overly cautious, but I don't feel like tackling that with 33 health. I'm gonna see if I can't find some health somewhere else in the level first. See if I'm lucky. Mmm, lots of tasty gold. Yum. Whoa. Oh, it's another teleporter. <laughs> it's all glowy and stuff, and those... Wait, were those bats or birds? The sprites look like birds, but that doesn't really make sense to have found in a dungeon like this. Well, I can just rub over, rub over all sorts of random shit in the environment, can't I? Um... Not entirely sure what that's there for. Maybe it's a feature that's not been fully implemented just yet. Where was that gold door? It was uh, down here, I believe. Let me just see what was behind it. I think it was a, a scroll. No, it's a grenade. Hmm. Not sure if that's worth spending 100 gold on. I don't know if grenades are good or not. Okay, well, at the risk of keeling over here, I'm gonna try and enter this secret area, and confirmation that fall damage does not seem to be a thing, but if you fall f far enough, far enough, yeah, you do take a bit of a stun. So I should try and avoid that. New challenge, kill all the enemies and make it to the exit without getting hit and in a limited amount of time. That's gonna be tricky. Let's see if I'm up for the task. Oh wow! Okay. They go incredibly fast. They are some speedy boys! But my character is pretty speedy as well. You know what? They never said I actually... had to kill anything, did they? Come on. Oh shit, I'm gonna... Nope. I'm the king, I'm the king. Oh no, 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 no. Oh. I rode, rolled just barely too late there, and I was probably near the end as well. And uh, unfortunately, the damage I took does stick around. Damn, I'm gonna have to work on my skills. Uh, let's see. Should probably just use the teleporters, but nah. Eh. Movement speed is quick enough that it's not a huge dealio. I'm gonna head back to that one merchant who I think was over here. And pick up something. Give me a little bit more survivability, which I really need given how low on health I am. Oh, wow, well, I really didn't take, uh, take into account just how expensive his stuff was. I thought it was all around a grand, but nope, it's all considerably more, so never mind about that. Let's just teleport to near the end. Alright, this seems to be the exit of this area at least. Maybe I'll be lucky and my HP will be restored when I leave. Fingers crossed. Nope. Great, but... The timer is paused, so maybe this is an in-between break area? Yeah, it's me again. The Collector, eh? In exchange for the cells you pillage, he can provide me with useful items. Ah, and this is what blueprints are used for. I do wonder if they are persistent or if you have to find them on a run if you want to craft something with them. Hmm, condition not met, unlock healing potion one. Okay, if they have prereqs to unlock in addition to the blueprints, then this progress probably is persistent. So let's unlock healing potions. I now own a health flask I can use at any time if I invest the cells, I suppose, right? Yep. Five cells for healing flasks. And yep, it states right there it's a permanent improvement. That seems worth it. Improved healing potions. Gold recovery. Conserve 25% of your gold when you die, so... 
You lose it on death, then. Not unusual for a roguelike. Blood sword causes bleeding. That could be useful for bigger enemies that I've yet to come across. Twin daggers, throwing knife, sturdy shield. Hmm. I wonder if I have to pay for these on each run or if they are truly permanent and that I can select them as long as I have the slots available. Probably that. Hmm. Greed shield. Let's go with the blood sword since I did get that lucky blueprint after all. Ooh, and that even unlocked a few things. Random starter bow. The starting bow is randomly drawn from those you have unlocked. And random starter shield, and damn, those are expensive. It'll be a while before I'm able to purchase those. And it looks like I can invest cells in upgrading other things I've unlocked, like weapons. Ooh, electrical whip. I'm really tempted to try that, but I don't have the cells for it anymore, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's all I'm interested in purchasing just now. Hopefully I don't lose cells if I die. Alright, okay, confirmation. Not even death can take the items I get from him. Good. As much as I like Binding of Isaac, I'm honestly not a fan of the roguelites that have no true persistent progress. Where you unlock more things, but you don't actually like have them permanently available. I more prefer the rogue legacy style where you just get stronger and stronger as you go along. And instead end up encountering increasingly difficult challenges to meet that increasingly powerful equipment. And it seems like this one has some extra bonuses that I'm going to assume are randomly generated. Damage plus 10% and plus 100% damage on a burning target. If only that was on a bleeding target that would be pretty OP. Yeah, let's swap out my rusted sword. Uh, let's see. Healing flask with LB. Might as well use that since uh, I really need to heal. It's probably why they gave it to me there. Oh, I have to hold. Pretty damn potent heal, but it takes a fair bit to use, so I'm not going to be able to down one in the midst of combat. Oh, I have to spend those cells. Okay. So it's that sort of thing. Uh, what would I want to invest them in then? I did say I was interested in that electric whip. Different weapon types to see if they have different movesets at all. So I might as well put my remaining six into that. Oh, who are you? Oh, that's awesome. So I get another free use of my flask and my health is fully restored between stages. At least as long as there's this big healing flask here. Maybe it's not guaranteed that you encounter it. Alright, let's enter the promenade of the condemned again. Oh! Well, I guess that answers my question about how many tile sets there are. If they're giving me such- if they're giving me a new one that is so drastically different this early, there must be quite a few indeed. This, friends, is how you do an early access title. Already this looks like a pretty complete game, and yet they plan to add even more content. I think they've said they plan on doubling the overall content in the game, in fact. With uh, the full release version, whenever they get around to doing that. Assassin's Dagger Blueprint. Fantastic. Damn, this is just like a, a random thing I happened upon, but I am super excited for it to continue to play it. And just to see what the developers continue to add, it's putting a very good foot forward. Although, whoop, you noticed me. Granted, it could turn out that there's actually not much variety in the long run, I suppose I'll see. So this definitely has a different moveset than my previous weapon. I swing downward instead of... no, upward instead of downward. A low strike instead of a high strike. And it seems like the combo is a little bit slower, but... Ooh! 
That's fine because of the bleeding. So that guy does not get interrupted by my combos as nicely as the other enemy types do. I can't just spam and be fine. Yeah, it's definitely not as smooth of a combo, but the bleed is very nice. Ooh, Sky Teleports. I wonder if my dodge has iframes. I can roll through enemies, but that doesn't mean I won't take damage. Especially since contact damage doesn't seem to be a thing. For which I am also quite grateful. I am not a fan of contact damage at all in these sorts of games. You know, I was originally thinking of just making this like a, a let's try. Oh, that's interesting. So that timer is more than just a dick measuring sort of thing, trying to get through the game as fast as possible to prove how cool you are. It's actually a gameplay thing. If you proceed through the game quickly enough, you'll be able to access new areas, presumably with better loot. Damn, I do love this background though. It's so nice and honestly oddly peaceful in contrast with the grim dungeon of the previous area and good thing I made use of my camera pan. We got spikes and I'm not interested in falling into them to see what kind they are. Presumably they just damage you a little. Uh, do I have to choose one of these or can I pick up both? I'm guessing I have to pick up one, so I can choose to improve one of my three stats or increase active skill damage and reduce the cooldown timer. Oh right, I haven't been making use of what I assume is my active skill. Let me just... Yeah, that is a skill, the bear trap thing. I really should. Since I haven't been using it too much, I'm probably best off picking up a main stat increase. Let's go with, uh, I don't know, more health. Oh no, I just straight up have two upgrades here. Sure, I'll take them. They were set up in such a way it looked like that roguelite thing of you have to choose one of these, but nope. Cool ass elevator lift here. Ooh, a little bit of platforming trickiness going on here. All right, not as tricky as I thought it would be. Ooh, pricey items. Flashbang to Golden Amulet. You may only equip one amulet at a time, but their effects are powerful. All damage taken is also dealt to nearby enemies. That sounds good. Wonder if I'll be able to pick up enough gold to purchase it before I leave. And uh, yeah, let's just handily teleport back rather than dealing with those spikes a second time. This seems incredibly well designed. I really hope this game does well because so far it is pretty amazing. Let's see, does this take me to a new area? Nope, it takes me to an interior, so... This is a game where there are both exterior and interior locations in each distinct level. That's pretty cool. Although it doesn't look like I'll be able to return from here. Tickle, 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 tickle. <laughs> uh, oh. Uh, oh, that's an alight enemy. I was gonna ask, what makes him so alight? It's uh, two hours at once. Oh no. And not being. Oh god. Okay, let's heal up. I did not handle that well at all. Oh god. Oh god. Here's my first death. Yep. And I lost five cells. Damn. Okay, I was not prepared to deal with an enemy that can just straight up tank through my shit and output a lot of damage in return, so it's back to the start. Yep, I'm back. I'm not exactly skilled at these sorts of games as much as I love them. Yeah, you could say that. Have you noticed how everything seems a little different each time? 
Yeah, that's the name of the genre, bud. One could think the island is alive. I hope that's not just idle prata and the game actually plays around with that. Like maybe have the environment attack you at some point or just have it be part of the story or something cool. So yeah, again I have the beginning choice here. That's why those upgrades are so expensive, you have a chance of getting a much better starting weapon or shield here if you pick them up. I might actually focus on purchasing those post haste. Uh, let's go with the shield again and actually try out some shield tech. Not with these guys, I could just take them down with spam. You know what, let's try it with this dude. Alright, that was a block. And, oh, I damaged them in return, nice. Ooh, well, I'm gonna want to leave you on the ground in case I get damaged later on. And I probably will. Oh wow, shit ton of enemies. Should be able to deal with them though. This is where a shield comes in handy if I can actually get the time. I can't get the timing right. Um, okay, I just did a cool- I did not handle that encounter very well, now did I? Oh boy, second death so immediately after the first. That's kind of embarrassing. Interesting, though, to see such a dramatic shift in scenery with the starting screen. Is this going to be a more water-focused level? That's cool, though, that um, the starting area actually changes each time you die. So, this shows what I've collected so far, I assume. So this place will be pretty well lit up once I picked up more items. I'm trying to think, is there a difference in the coloration? Does that actually mean something? Maybe red... No, because I haven't picked up the electrical whip. Maybe it's just random. Or it's dependent on the type of item. Yeah, that might be it. Green are skill things, red are equipables, and blue is the flask. Uh. You know what? Maybe I should go with a bow. That might come in handy in encounters like that. Snipe a few enemies from afar. Oh, you know what I've done, have you? Well, tell me. Regale me of my grand experiences. Of my immediate death last time. Oh, this guy probably has your game stats. Yep, I've been killing things, and I've also been killed by- oh. Well, that's disappointing. That seems like an odd feature to not have from the start, even if you are an early access title. Hmm, do aerial attacks actually deal a little bit more damage than the ground combo? Uh, no, they do the exact same. Yeah, let's actually oop, inspect the environment a little bit better. Okay, it's just these two, so it's gonna be should be so bad. Yeah, take down the bowmen first. They are incredibly deadly. I'll pick up that upgrade after I've dealt with Mr. Archer and Mr. Grenade. Oh. I discovered a secret in a random spot somehow. Oh, it's a wall secret. That's pretty cool. Uh, so can I pick up both of these? Because if I have to choose one, I'd rather the skill. Okay, now I get both. They were both hiding in the wall here. So, uh, attack every wall, I guess. What is this, Castlevania? And base upgrade over here. Let's go with uh, more health. Clearly I need that. That is a pretty significant upgrade. I didn't appreciate that when I picked up the previous one. But that's an extra 40 health. 40-ish. Wait, 
Why do I not have the, uh, the grenade? I thought I picked that up. Oh, no, it was just a blueprint. Never mind. Actually, I see a rune in the wall. Can I activate that? I can attack it. Oh! So secrets are indicated to some extent, so... I'm gonna need to have my eyes be peeled like grapes. I want to make sure to find them all. That's really cool, though, that it's not just in random walls. It's actually marked. Well, it is in random walls. It's just also marked, rather than being unmarked. And that... Wow, it's just... So you can get blueprints from random enemies. Oh dear. Let me uh, just pick this up right quick. Infantry bro... Uh, infantry bow, not bro. Say in a frat house. That sounds useful. Let's see, do I spend the thousand golds? A green plus mark that probably has something to do with health, so color be interested. Oh, it's a health upgrade, sure. I'll take that. Hmm. The, uh, the number that your HP is increased by does not seem standardized. I wonder if it's just random or just odd numbers. I don't have the gold for any of these, unfortunately. I wonder, is this like most other roguelites in that you can attack the merchant? Nope. Okay. Had to test that out, and might as well do that early on in case, uh, it turns out I can, because he'd probably be an uber badass like they tend to be, and, you know, murder me instantly. It's nice to see that if you attack an enemy shield, at least with these basic ones, you don't automatically take damage. They just uh, immediately counterattack in most instances. I don't know about you, but I'm just not a fan of auto guarding enemies like that, where if you just attack them during a certain point, you get punished. I just don't feel like that's all that satisfying. Alright, let's try out the whip. Join the dark side. Yeah, it's better than the rusty sword. Less damage, but whoa, look at that range! This is pretty insane. Alright, another teleporter. And I have yet to use my healing flask too. Then again, this is the, uh, the first area which I had no trouble with the first time around. I did the second, but that's just me uh, being very bad at dealing with um, mess ups like that. Alright, 11 cells. What do I want to earn my way towards? I'm actually really liking this electric whip so far, even though I haven't actually used it in combat. So I'm tempted to put cells toward that. You know what? I might as well make that an option here. That way, as long as I can get through the first area, I can pick up one of those. Otherwise... let's see... Inflicts a critical blow when you strike at close range. Interesting. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Let's, uh, make my way toward that. I'm interested in unlocking more items first. Mostly, which is why I'm not going towards these, even though they're probably the best to try and purchase as early as possible. Um, I really don't need this, so I'm just gonna ignore it, see if that does anything. Maybe you're limited to one of those every now and again, and if you use it, you don't get it next time you had a break. Alright, back in the forest area, so it seems like the progression of the environments is fixed. Dungeon, then forest, and then whatever comes after it. Odd though that the start of this area is the exact same secret included. So maybe only some of it is procedurally generated? Like, some bits will be fixed, no matter what. Oh, that's the downside to the whip. Incredible range and fast swing speed, but it's not very powerful. I guess I should've- oh god. Realized that from its attack damage- okay. Um, I'm not doing so well here. It also doesn't stun very well, not that I've been able to stunlock these enemies before. 
Uh, bows aren't very strong as it turns out. Given their slow speed and limited ammo, I figured that would do more damage, but nope. Not with the cheapo debo starter bow at least. I guess I really should have tried out the electrical whip before singing its praises. I can't even tell if it actually hits multiple enemies or not. I assumed it would given its insane range, but it seems like I can only strike the one directly in front of me, which makes it way less good than I assumed it would be. Oh well, you live and you learn. Hey, I'll take an upgrade. More health, please. Although, maybe I should have gone with damage. Actually, given the first time I went through, I picked up a few power upgrades, at least one, maybe two, I don't remember. And I haven't this time, maybe that's why I'm doing very poor damage. It's not because I'm using a weaker weapon, although I'm sure that contributes, it's more because I just haven't gotten any real damage upgrades. And I would still be doing pretty poor damage even if I had the Rusty Blade. Maybe. Oh well, it seems the game is, uh... Responding to that query and actually letting me find an answer, so that's a new thing. Presumably the enemies covered by that shield are invincible, so let's get rid of that. Ooh, that's pretty tough. Let's get rid of you post-haste, good. Okay, I'm not handling this well. Yeah, I really shouldn't be getting hit so much, but that's just me being pretty new to this. When I actually get more familiar with the combat, I can probably end up just- Oh, that's the strength of the whip. Can I just cheese these? Yes, I can. These guys can teleport, which limits it somewhat, but I can attack off of ladders. And whips automatically strike the nearest enemy, it looks like. Uh, let's try that again. Okay, so attacking makes me drop off of the ladder, but I can- I have enough of an air combo that I can still make use of some pretty good cheese here. So, whip status is actually looking a little bit better. Let's uh, heal up. I'm a little bit low on HP. Oh yep, I can totally cheese these guys. Unless they teleport, of course. So, that's the main strength of the whip. Nice. Now I don't feel so bad about picking this up. Uh... Is this the kind of game where touching the sides of spikes hurts you? Because if it's not, I should be able to make my way over there. If it's not... Well... Oh no. Oh no. Ooh, okay. Thankfully, spikes don't deal too much damage, and I learn things. Video game science is quite important. You have to test out all manner of things. Since similar mechanics do change from game to game. Ah, if I had been just a little bit faster. So those doors are for if you're really just speeding through the levels, probably even ignoring most of the enemies, really. I'll have to try and do a speed run at some point. Oh yeah, I'll take more weapon damage. And a little bit of platforming. Is the uh, the chain gonna hurt? Good. Ooh. Oh, I have nowhere near enough gold, even though I really want that golden amulet. That sounds like such a good effect considering how many hits I've been taking. So... Yeah, I noticed uh, my remark earlier about it being somewhat procedurally generated seems to be true. Because the specific terrain and enemies within that terrain are definitely different. But the general layout of the levels does seem to be consistent. Like this was at, rough, at roughly the what seems to be the midway point in this second area. You have this drop down here with a little bit of platforming. And it ends up leading to an area where you can purchase either double daggers or a golden amulet, and that's the exact same as it was on my first run. It's just the particulars of what rooms in your way are different. 
So that's actually a pretty interesting way of handling this sort of game design. It's a little bit less random, but it allows them to design it to be more... better, you know? Because, like, it's a specific way that things proceed. It's not purely procedural, which means random luck isn't gonna just spawn, like, a, a shitty level as much. If that makes sense. Okay, I should probably try and use my skills. Alright, so I don't seem to be able to aim the grenades, it just lobs one forward. Let me just wait for these guys to walk away. Oh, so not much damage, but that freeze effect is pretty nice. Let's just uh, drag you away so I can deal with Scarecrow. It's actually pretty cool having a Scarecrow that generates a shield. Truly drawing aggro like no other Scarecrow can. I mentioned this before, but the music so far is also quite excellent. It's not the kind that's super memorable per se, but it's quite atmospheric and fits very well with the, uh, the aesthetics. Oh, I want to drop down there, thank you. And, yep, and then proceed a little bit further, and you enter an indoors area. I don't think I've ever actually played a roguelite that does procedural generation this way. That's pretty interesting. Alright, boss fight. And, yep, same elite enemy, elite enemy. I really need to be making use of my double jump more is the thing. Alright, so Az are gonna spawn as long as he's alive, so I really need to focus on him. Uh, he attacks more quickly than I think. Fuck. I gotta rely on aerial attacks. Good thing I have the auto-homing whip. Yeah, it was definitely a worthwhile purchase. Okay, yep. So, you wanna focus on the elite enemy because as soon as you take them down, the wave ends. You only want to take down the helpers if they're getting in your way. Permanently gives you the ability to grow climbable vines, so there's that sort of permanent progress as well. That's pretty cool. More maneuvering capability. And that's permanent. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm more and more impressed with this game as I continue to play it. And as I mentioned before... Oh, that's what these are for. That's cool. And as I mentioned before, the devs plan on adding, hmm, like double the content as uh, the game progresses. So I would definitely recommend picking this up if it interests you, because it seems like it might be truly one of the greats up the way, up there with uh, Binding of Isaac, perhaps. Some parts of the procedural generation could stand to be a little bit better. That stretch there, for example, which had pretty much nothing, aside from some weak sauce platforming. But that's something they can likely improve in time, the uh, procedural generation formula that the game uses. Magnetic grenade, that sounds interesting. Oh, you know what probably would have helped me with dealing with that elite enemy? The ice grenades, or the bear trap. I keep forgetting I have those. Let's see, does the electric whip interact with water to any degree? It does not seem to. Unfortunate. Not that I really would have, have expected it to. Oh god, nope. Okay, I'm actually nearly dead and I used my healing flask. Uh, I gotta try and avoid taking damage unless I want to die again. Oh, don't grab onto that ledge. Sometimes the auto ledge grabbing is a little bit aggressive. That's one complaint I have so far, but it's a very minor one. I'm just going to make use of my OP electric whip here. Seriously, this thing is pretty insane for dealing with a lot of encounters. 
shiny rock. Yeah, it's worth picking up. 120 gold after all. And HP, fantastic. That is exactly what I needed game. Hopefully that'll let me make my way to the next healing flask. Ooh. What's in the box? Grenade three. Oops, wrong button. Let's uh you know, as useful as be it be a trap, yeah. Good against all those alcoholics. As good as bear trap seems like it might be. I'm feeling more like grenades, like high octane explosives. I really should have just used the teleporter, but I really like the movement in this game, so it doesn't bother me manually backtracking. And yet they still let you they still let you avoid that with the teleporters. Such good design. I am just absolutely in love with this game so far. I really hope that it just doesn't turn out that it ends up getting like really shittier in a little bit, because that would just break my heart. Oh no. Okay, one more hit, maybe two if I'm lucky and I'm dead. I really need to focus here. Seems like I might be nearing the end of this stage, I hope. Come on game, throw me a little bit of a bone. Hmm. Alright, it seems I have to come from the other side, so there's a little bit of openness to the level design as well. And uh, presumably these will do something as well once I pick up another upgrade. Alright, let's ascend. Oh good, I'm heading to a new area. Let's see, can I sneak my way up? No, I don't have the platforming capability. Um, at risk of dying on the off chance that falling damage from a great enough height is a thing, I'm just gonna drop down here and see what happens. Okay, yeah, it's just stun. Very good, very good. So hopefully there is a break area in between all of the areas. I really want to rest up. Come on, healing flask. Come on, healing flask. Well, first I gotta deal with this guy, of course. I have quite a few souls this time. Oh, cells. Inflict a critical blow when I backstab my enemy, so if I strike them from behind, that sounds good. But uh, I might as well make my way to the infantry bow, since I already put in a little bit of cells into that. Bingo. And let's put my one remaining one into the assassin's dagger. Nine more. Oh, and good to see that upgrades are sometimes cheaper than the initial purchase, at least with expensive items. Alright, let's try out that infantry bow. Much better damage it looks like. Why is there a number in parentheses? It says 151 parentheses 425 damage a second. Oh, that's probably the damage of the critical blow? It must be. So that's pretty cool. So it does basic bow damage when you're far away, but if you're up close it does like three times that. Okay, good. Healing. Ooh. Just take a good whiff of that healing bong. Nice. Alright, onwards to the ramparts. Which, uh, from the name alone, sounds like it will be pretty different visually. Let's see. Oh yeah! The visual design in this game is pretty damn varied so far, way more than I expected. It makes me think that I might actually be nearing the end of this run, that it'll be a little bit like a uh, like Risk of Rain, and that the actual stages are 
distinct and varied, but there's only like six or seven of them in the in the entire game. Although who knows, maybe there'll be like 20 areas or something in this game is like literally the best thing ever. Probably not though. Uh, yeah, not gonna toss aside my newly purchased bow for the dagger. In fact, I should be trying out the bow right here. Uh, the group of enemies, especially one that is so easily cheesed with the electric bow. God, this weapon is so good for the cheesing potential. Not so good for stunning though, that's its weakness. That and its lower damage output. Oh yeah, there was that move again that I think I tried on that second one in my uh, Panic Flurry. What exactly is that? Okay, so I have a ground pound. If I jump in the air and then press down and jump, it does that. Presumably that damages, maybe even stuns enemies. That's pretty cool. Ooh, damage and stun. Let's see. Yeah, let's replace Grenade 3 with that. I prefer stunning over damage with this sort of side item. Geronimo! Oh. Shouldn't have done that. Should not have made that blind leap of faith, oh well. Guess I'll be using that healing flask sooner than I thought. Oh no, another jerk wizard. At least these guys can be stun locked. Makes up for their bullshit ability to hit me through walls. Oh, no, no, no. I got in a bit of a panic there and pressed um, RB to roll. I'm not sure why. I don't think I've played any game that does that recently. I guess it's just a general panic sort of thing. So, yep. And then down that healing juice. Don't think I'm gonna make it to a new area, but who knows? Maybe I'll be able to do a little bit better than I have been so far. Or not. Oh. The cooldown time between rolls is what got me there. Yeah, I am not doing well at all. Unless I encounter some healing post haste, I'm probably not going to make it much further. It is what it is. That's the nature of these roguelike games. You learn as you go. Grenade 4. Tempting me to switch back to that, but nah. Really, I think the main reason I'm having so much trouble is my absolute refusal to use these side items, the skills. I don't know why I'm having trouble actually using them. Seriously, look at that. I stun one enemy, take down the other, and take down the first one when it unfreezes. So much easier than just trying to deal with it purely with melee, which the game clearly expects you to not do. It expects you to make use of everything that it's giving you, and that's why I'm having such a hard time. But again, learn as you go. Yeah, I was never going to be able to open that thing. It seems like you have to make it to those doors in like under five minutes per if you want to actually go through them. So it definitely requires you to speed through at a very enhanced pace than you normally would do. Kind of like if you want to access the boss rush in the Binding of Isaac. And I'm interested in just making my way through the game slowly and steadily at this point. That way I can actually make progress. Oh no! Haha, <laughs> you're not the only one with a- oh, range attack. Your range is better though. Yeah, probably don't want to drop down there. I'm at low enough health that if it's a pit, it would definitely kill me. Let's just uh, head onwards here. Ooh, flying enemies. This could get hairy. Let's uh, lob a grenade. Deal with the enemies. Good, good. I'm surprised the flying ones didn't notice me. I figured they would have aggroed by now, but thankfully the game is being a little bit lenient, or maybe not. 
You know what? I'm thinking I don't want to head to that area with as low health as I'm at. I'm just going to check what's up here first. More asshole archers. And more cheese for me. Hey, if you're going to be a jerky enemy type, I'm going to be a jerky player type. Just how it goes. Jerk in, jerk out. I am a verified jerk machine. Oh no. Got stunned. I was gonna say, I can actually attack the shield dude pretty safely from a distance thanks to my whip. He still did the uh, shield rush though. Oh yeah, whip him in the butt. Yeah, got him good. Whew, okay. My damage is starting to look a little bit weak at this point. But as long as I take things slowly and surely, I'll be fine, unless a flying dude bum rushes me. Made it though. Yeah, the underground seems to be filled with those flying jerks, so I think I'm gonna avoid heading there if I can help it. Yeah. I want no partake in that pie. Oh no, asshole wizards. Oh yeah, I haven't mentioned this before as well, but the uh, blood effects when you kill enemies is pretty nice as well. Very chunky, very meaty. That plus uh, the whole, it looks like they use 3D models converted to sprites thing, art style. Reminds me very much of the game Slain, it looks very similar to that. Where, as I said, most of these sprites look like they were 3D models that were then converted to sprites. I don't know if that's actually a thing that's done, but that's just what the this sort of art style looks like to me. The general movement. It doesn't look like typical sprite animation. Teleporters, so useful. Such a good design decision. I guess another negative point is that your main form of attack is not ex- why didn't I dodge? No. Piccolo's gonna be so upset. I was gonna say, uh, one of my other complaints so far is that your main form of attacking enemies is a little bit underwhelming. It's just a spam, which is a little bit disappointing. But it works. Like, the game is clearly designed around the combat being very simple. It's simple combat, but very fast. And it gives you other options as well of engaging. It's just that your primary one being so simple is a bit of a sore point for me. Um... You say you noticed my achievements, but clearly not. Come on, don't brag. We both know you're new at this. It's fine. Uh... So yeah, I think I've made significant progress here for this first session. I was just going to do a one-off let's try of this, but I think I might actually make this a series. Well, I'll just do like a, a series of runs every now and again, like maybe a few times a week. Looks like it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to see just how much more content there is, but just from what I've seen so far, I am incredibly impressed. And I would absolutely recommend it to anyone who likes these sorts of roguelike games. It uh, clearly takes influence from a whole bunch that I've mentioned throughout, but overall it reminds me most of Rogue Legacy. What with the fact that it's a platformer and the fact that it has a heavy emphasis on persistent progress. Of your character getting stronger, more abilities, uh, as they go along. And then giving you greater challenges to deal with, even if it's not to the extent that Rogue Legacy does. But yeah, this is uh, Ben Dead Cells. One other thing I will mention that um, I thought I would bring up at some point, but I never just found the time to. This is a game that a lot of journalists are comparing to Dark Souls, of all things. And that just goes to show you how shitty most games journalists are, because I think the only reason they're doing that is because the fact that the official promo stuff for the game 
does call it a Souls light, which I really don't see. This game is nothing like Dark Souls to any degree. Literally the only thing so far that's like Dark Souls is the name, which is kind of evocative of that, Dead Cells. And that's just the name. It is a good name though, by the way. Maybe more games should copy uh, Dark Souls' naming scheme, if they can be creative with it at least. But yeah, I I'm thinking games journalists are just referring to it as being Souls-like because of that, because really it's nothing like Souls at all. But it is a very good rogue rogue blah, blah, blah. Of course I fall five feet before the finish line. Um, It is a very good roguelite, and I heartily recommend it.